hi again my name's Andy and uh, in my discussion here about the GEC BC 5645 radio these items marked in red are the items that I've discussed so far and these are the items that I want to talk about today and that includes the internal frame aerials for uh, medium wave and long wave, the wave change switch, V3 which is the IF amplifier for the MF section and it also acts as a frequency changer for the AM frequency range. And finally the two IF transformers. So this is of course the chassis yeah, out of the case and this is the frame aerial. The inner coil is for the long wave frequencies and the outer coil that's uh, wave wound around those fingers is for the medium wave frequencies. The wave change switch, of course, I've shown you in the previous video. This is V3, and this valve is the uh, intermediate frequency amplifier for the FM band, and it's also the frequency changer for the AM bands. This is the little aluminium can that houses the first IF transformer for the AM section and the second IF transformer for the FM section. Now we'll turn back to the circuit diagram. The FM intermediate frequency is taken from the top of the first IF transformer for the VHF section and it comes down to the wave change switch and from here it's routed through to grid 1 of V3. The output of V3 is connected in series with both primaries for the first AM IF transformer and the second FM IF transformer. The FM transformer is at the one at the top. What I wanted to do in these videos is show you something that's maybe a little bit different to that that you've seen before. I did want to show you the various frequencies on the oscilloscope but uh, my oscilloscope pretty much quenches uh, these very small signals at the front end of the equipment so I thought what I would do is show you the inside of the intermediate frequency transformers and here I've taken the transformer out of the chassis. So here is the aluminium can that I've uh, just removed and this is what the transformers look like inside. The top former carries the primary and secondary of the frequency modulated or FM IF transformer. The bottom former carries the primary and secondary windings for the AM or amplitude modulated intermediate frequencies. Associated with each winding is an adjustable dust core. That's a ferrite core that screws into uh, each end of the tube, so four cores, one for each winding, and that allows the inductance of the winding to be changed so that the transformer can be tuned. This is the head of a matchstick that I've used to give you some idea of the size of the winding and of the wire used. And, uh, but I, I just want to let you see that these transformers are not something to be afraid of. They can be repaired 
um, and in case you're worried I've put this transformer back in the radio and it's it's working just fine the capacitors that you saw in the IF transformer work in conjunction with the coil to form a tank circuit hopefully if you've seen the other videos in this series you'll remember that if a tank circuit is excited by a frequency to which it is tuned then there will be maximum voltage across the tank circuit any other frequencies will be suppressed this trace shows the response curve of the FM transformer frequency range across the bottom is 5 megahertz to 15 megahertz and you can see the dramatic dip at 10.8 megahertz uh, the IF transformer should be tuned to 10.7 although in fairness I didn't calibrate the analyzer before I took these readings all I wanted to do was show you the general profile of the response curve for an IF transformer. Before we leave the IF transformer I'd like to point out a couple of things. First of all the precise frequency that the transformer is tuned to or peaked to is not critical. What is important however is that all of the transformers in a given group are tuned or peaked to an appropriate frequency in this radio the FM coils are tuned to 10.7 megahertz and the AM coils are tuned to 470 kilohertz another point that may not have escaped your notice is the huge gap between the primaries on the left and the secondaries on the right Normally, if you wanted to make an efficient transformer, the primary and secondary windings would be very closely associated with one another for good magnetic coupling and high efficiency. But the purpose of these transformers, remember, is to act as a kind of filter and only to allow frequencies that precisely match the tune frequency to pass through them. If the windings were wound one on top of the other then there would be capacitive coupling between the windings and that could allow a wider spread of frequencies to be passed through the transformer. So again remembering only those frequencies that exactly match the tune frequency will produce the highest voltage across the coil and that will produce the largest magnetic field and that will travel furthest and it will also be detected from greater distance so by separating the two coils it's only those peaks of the correct frequency that are coupled between the two windings hopefully that's uh, a clear explanation of uh, how these transformers function and uh, it should give you a reasonable indication as to why uh, IF transformers are normally housed in a metallic enclosure and that's to protect them from interference from uh, magnetic fields and uh, other signals that could otherwise interfere with the uh, delicate balance of uh, this sort of circuitry. I don't know if anybody's used this sort of analogy before but when talking about uh, tuned circuits it's easy to think in terms of a prism and there's white light coming in from the left and it's split into the various colors on the right and if you think of those colors as the various frequencies or radio stations uh, that are present then they're all there to be seen at once if we only want to select one frequency then we need some sort of gate and in the case of uh, the prism uh, 
a piece of metal or cardboard with a slot in it can be used to filter out the one frequency that we want and this is how a tuned circuit works it filters out the one frequency that we want and just as we can move the card with the slot in it to get the color or the frequency that we want so the tuned circuit can be altered to again find the frequency that we want it's selective if we make the gap very small or the Q of the circuit very high then the frequency that we select is very narrow here I've made the slot in the cardboard wider so I'm receiving multiple frequencies I'm getting multiple colors come through and this is just like having a tuned tank circuit that is not very selective uh, we would say that it has a low Q and uh, that's not very desirable for most applications this is the characteristic curve for one of the IF transformers that I've shown you and uh, I'm just going to merge it with the other image this is how I visualize the selective nature of a tank circuit and if you can imagine that we move that characteristic bell up and down the page so then the appropriate frequency will reach the uh, top of that uh, peak or bell and uh, that's just how tank circuits work except they work on radio frequency rather than light but uh, I hope that uh, is something that uh, that helps you okay as usual I've talked for too long so the uh, rest of the items that I said I would discuss I will go into greater depth in the next video hope you found that interesting thanks for watching bye bye